Welcome everyone, Dr. Thor here, get ready for Gnosis. Well, let's talk about telekinesis and the easy way of doing it. Uh, telekinesis has been proven for hundreds of years. Remember, we have over 150 years of research into the psychic sciences, the occult sciences from uh, all types of noted individuals, uh, proving the existence of just about everything, including recent uh, research done by credible people uh, into communication with the dead. Now, telekinesis is another one of those things that works, works all the time. Not difficult. All you need is to get yourself a little psychic wheel. Now we sell these and I'll give you a link down at the bottom. Uh, these are inexpensive and should be used daily as your occult gym tool. Are you pushing your little psychic wheel around every day to flex that muscle? Well you should be. Everybody can do it it's pretty easy, but I'm going to give you the secrets of it because, again, we have a misunderstanding of how to do everything, and we think it's some sort of um, typical consciousness act or physical act, which it is not. So you have to work differently. You have to think differently, etc. You know, I've talked about this a lot. And if you don't, you know, get your head together, so to speak, and you don't believe in the process and you allow your toxic mind to come in, which has been programmed by all those dumb bunker idiot skeptics, all the losers of the world that make a lot of money off of attacking others without finding any solution. Psychic power doesn't work. Let's go back to the good old days of bleeding people. Yeah, like good medicine is. So we get involved in all these things that they want to take us backwards. They want to take us to a zone that doesn't work, uh, to a reality that is false, taking you out of the real reality, saying that you are false. And people love to get behind these losers, these clown college graduates, these devious, these convicted felons. Uh, yeah, those are what all the dumb bunkers are, people. It's just a matter of fact. Ooh. So the whole idea is that this is what we're looking at. Uh, uh, so you can, um, of course, and anybody can be can do these things generally to one extent or another. Uh, it is not difficult, and people are brainwashed not to do it. So we need to understand that uh, to uh, know how these things particularly function. Now, first of all, you need some sort of psychic uh, wheel. We recommend you get an official one because you be, should be doing it every day. Uh, you know, invest in these little bit of tools. They're not that much money and do it right. But people have done everything uh, by uh, making their own little psychic tools and so forth. I don't recommend this because it's certainly very unscientific because uh, you're making something a very different. Well, what is the freedom of movement? What is this? But basically, you get this little kind of spinning type of wheel. Uh, it's placed on top of a pin and then you can uh, move it strictly through your psychic uh, abilities. So the actual energies which are pretty um, low emanating from your mind that actually turns this. Uh, it does also bring in other outside of your energies as we talk about because there's a misunderstanding that it, this is some sort of bio process that comes 100% from you when it's not. I won't go into that here yet again but the whole idea is psychic powers particularly the use of machines you're bringing in energies to assist you. You're not generating them. So this is one of the big misnomers out there. But let's talk about how this process is done quick, easy, and simple. Now, first of all, you don't force things. You're not tightening your muscles. You're not trying to uh, push, push, push. This type of thing that uh, oftentimes movies and other things show. Uh, because of the fact it wouldn't look very interesting on a movie if someone sit there calmly and something was turning. Uh, that isn't very good art. So you've got to look like they're straining and, uh, you know, you see the uh, veins pop on somebody's head. This is how you don't move anything because you're forcing common energies that don't do anything. So we need to understand that. Now, the whole process of everything is the fact of letting it happen and just seeing it in your mind's eye. And you have to believe that it is possible 100%. It's as simple as that. Now, there's a problem with so-called belief out there thinking that this is some sort of result from positive thinking and that you have to believe in something. Well, if real, you don't have to believe. You have to believe in a bullet if it's shot at you uh, that it's going to kill you. Well, obviously, no, it will kill you. 
So, And this is true with so many things. But the bottom line is that you do kind of believe in that. You understand what a bullet is. You understand the deadly capacity of it. So you're believing in that. If you 100% didn't believe in it, could the bullet not hurt you? Well, that's something to think about. So the whole idea is that um, you have to understand that you as an entity are very powerful and you can uh, bring the energies to bear on whatever you want. When you doubt this, when you think of something else, when you get a stupid little book that tells you to believe in the fairy god in the sky, uh, all of those things uh, that are happening there, well, you're disempowering yourself. So if you don't, and your bioconsciousness doesn't uh, do things that you don't believe in. It'll just, pit. okay, so what, I just, uh, back to the couch. Where's my Cheetos? God don't believe it, why should I swear? So the whole idea is, uh, the bottom line is, um, we have to fully understand that. So having uh, faith in the idea is, yes, this is real. This happens. Simple as that, I'm going to make it happen. So the whole idea is that that's the kind of attitude you have to approach it with. This is where all your centering comes in. This is where your occult gym uh, techniques are. This is a skill. You know, the arrogance of people and your dumb bunkers, you think that, well, every, since it's normal and natural, uh, anybody can do it. Well, just do it right in front of me right now. Let's do it. Let, let, let's, uh, let's bring a pipe up. It. It's a, why don't you do something like learn how to count to four? You know, these are the kind of things that uh, putting somebody on the, the um, uh, in, right, pushing them to do something on the spot is really a horrible thing to do. And that's not how things work in life. So uh, the bottom line is people can do lots of other, th of, of many things, but they have to be trained, they have to be ready for it, etc. So it just doesn't happen because you want to happen instantly. So, um, but yes, this does. You got, but you got to, um, and it doesn't work for everybody. Not everybody is, but mostly it doesn't work for people because they don't believe in it, uh, because they want to be the pleaser. Oh, I want to be part of society. You know, the ones that doesn't take care of its children and starts wars and pollutes the earth and poison. Oh, I want to be part of them. After all, they run everything. So this is the kind of nonsense that we run into. So if you want to be part of them. Why are you listening to this? Just get the hell out of here. So the whole idea is I'm a little sick and tired of the dumb bunkers out there, the idiot skeptics who have achieved. You know, all this talky uh, of failure has done a lot for us. And we know that their gods, uh, the Einsteins of the world, have achieved absolutely nothing. So um, those people, even scientists who believe in this and have done it and who have created things, they get their messages from things like dreams, sitting on streetcars, all the things that uh, these scientists claim where they really got their inspirations from, not sitting in front of a chalkboard. So the whole idea is that these are the kind of uh, nonsense that goes out there. So that's the basics of doing anything in life is accepting the fact that, to begin with, that this is possible, this can be done, it's really not a big deal. You just have to go out and do it and that you personally can do it. Uh, because the first thing you do when you run into a problem is what do you tell yourself? Let's say somebody gives you a giant mathematical problem and you hate math. You have trouble uh, adding up two and two together. You look at this and the first thing is, oh, I don't get it. I can't do this. Oh, no, 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 no. This is what you're saying to yourself. Well, obviously, you're not going to be able to do that. So you immediately say you can't do it. Now, that may be something technical like that, but if something is not technical, anybody can do it. You know, people say they can't do this, they can't, I can't cook, I can't do that. Well, this is, of course, nonsense. These are just learned skills. And if you go into something thinking you can't do it, well, you're going to be constantly canceling yourself out. And you're going to have to go through the learning stage where you get over that. Because every time we learn something new, we basically say we can't do it. Then two weeks later, gee, I'm doing great at it. I'm a master at it. So this is what happens. So this is no different as anything else. And if you think somehow this is strange or odd to do, well, where did you get that lump of poo thought from? What, from some bogus person you met? Some teacher? Some scientist? Oh, yes. From the cream of the crop, you got the bottom of the barrel information. So, you know, you don't go to a particular plumber and ask them how to fix your car. It's as simple as that. So the whole idea is deal with people that know what they're talking about, uh, 
have the information, are professionals in the field, and go to them and get your strokes and information from them. Uh, it's as simple as that. Don't go to the naysayers. Don't go to the pundits. Don't go to those pseudo-intellectual, uh, garbage, puking freaks uh, that are going to tell you lies because it doesn't fit into their reality, mostly because they don't make money from it. And they don't want anybody to have powers uh, past theirs. What scares the machine uh, so much is people working on their own without tools that cost money. This really freaks them out. If the average person is empowered, well, that's pretty frightening. And if they're empowered in their own uh, bio container, that's even more frightening. So these are the things we have to understand. There are many issues going on here. So let's go back to the simple understandings of telekinesis. Now, the simple understandings of telekinesis is plain and simple. It's going to happen, and you you visualize just it spinning. There you are sitting, and that's it. You're done, baby. <laughs> you know, it's like everything else that we've um, I've developed here over the years. And, you know, you all started out with the basic understanding that you have to concentrate and you got to spend hours doing everything to be good at it. Yeah, that's the human task you have to do it to because they're so boring. They're so repetitious that most people don't try, again, even mentally to do anything because it's so boring. So you get the boring people to do the boring stuff. That's what they do. So, um... Everyone needs to understand these simple facts. Uh, so uh, you, what you want to do with this is that you would sit in front of your wheel, and obviously you're not going to cheat yourself. Make sure there's no winds. You're not going to blow on it. Who would do this? What's the point of doing something if you're cheating all the time? It doesn't even make sense. You know, It's like getting a professional baseball player to go up and hit the balls for you. Well, you could do that, but that's not what the game is about. You're supposed, you have to hit it yourself. What's the point of that? So people that do those things are people that go in and try and trick people, like uh, has happened to a few scientists um, and so forth, uh, is pretty bottom-of-the-barrel nonsense. And if you allow yourself to be taken in by those as a testing person, well, you've got a problem because you've got to always be on edge. And, of course, that was the whole idea of tricking scientists, is that now every scientist doesn't want to do tests because they're afraid of being tricked. And if you're tricked and say, look, this person may be doing something, ah, nah, 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 you're wrong, you've been tricked. Well, okay, well, there goes your uh, PhD flushed down the proverbial toilet. Of course, this was done deliberately by a plotting, evil, deviant person uh, who was being paid a lot of money uh, by intelligence agencies and others. That's how they work. Keep everybody disempowered. That's what we want. So, what you generally do there, and as I said, get out decent peace. If you want to do these kind of experiments and you're not using proper tools, again, the only person you're tricking is yourself. You need to have a proper tool to work with. That's number one. Or don't bother doing it. Cutting out a little piece of paper and putting it on a pin is backward. Does anything else prove that way? If you were to prove their science, do they expect you? Let's just kind of grab a chemical here and a little pencil. And You really think that's how it works? If a scientist wants to prove something to you, you'll have the finest state-of-the-art stuff. It's the same thing with this. Don't look at this casually because it doesn't involve a huge amount of money or other uh, contrived nonsense that this isn't something to be taken seriously and done correctly. And it's about time we start from that to begin with. How can we possibly do any scientific tests unless we have actual proper equipment to do it with? So get yourself one of those psychic wheels which uh, we have a link to down below here and make sure that you uh, use the test properly. Now obviously you want to put this on a table in front of you and you, you should be about a foot away from it. You don't need to be close. On the other hand you don't want to go from the other side of the room. That's a little stupid isn't it? So the whole idea is should be about a foot or two away from you, uh, depending whatever you feel comfortable with. You want to sit comfortably in front of it in a chair, and then you just tell it to spin, usually clockwise, and you just see it spinning, and you relax. No, you don't focus on it. There you go. Focus on it, and you turn your energy off. It just happens. Now, this happens with all psychic uh, empowerments or biophysical empowerments as they're better understood to be for. So the whole idea is these biophysical movements uh, are 
there all the time. You cannot push them out. Anytime you concentrate and want to make something happen, you go from the biophysical realm into what's really considered the physical realm. Now you're using muscles and concentration and chemicals within your body. Uh uh uh. uh. That's for shoveling your street with. That's for sweeping your house with. That's for driving your car with. That's not for doing this. It's apples and oranges. Everybody needs to understand that's completely different than you ever think of for anything you do. Because as a human, we always concentrate and we're always trying to force it. Even when you study for something in a course, what are you doing? Your repetition. And there's a certain push to that. There's a clamping down of your muscles. There, You're trying to make this happen in a physical way. And usually that doesn't work too well either. Uh, but when it comes to this type of uh, biofunctioning, it doesn't work at all. because you're, you're tightening up all your energy centers that create this when you physically start tightening muscles and so forth. You're, you're actually clogging the energetic flow through your uh, bio-empowerment system. So it's very important that you're relaxed and it's very important that you let it happen. You just let it happen. You just uh, believe the fact that, look, it's going to turn. We know it's going to turn. It's just as simple as that. And there's nothing to think about. There's nothing to concentrate on. It's just turning. That's the way it is. Look at it. And that's how you do things. And that's how you do everything, whether it's dowsing, tu tuning your radionic machines. You let it happen. You don't make it happen tensing muscles, forcing it. If you're using pendulums and you're trying to turn it, well, first of all, pendulums, which are fantastic training tools, you let it happen. If you're, if you're thinking in your mind this should be a clockwise spin, yes, because that's what you wanted to read, well, you've just crippled the process. You have to go into neutral. Now, anybody who's uh, ever driven a uh, stick shift automobile understands what neutral is compared to being in gear. Now, people go to neutral for lots of... What does neutral do? Well, neutral uh, is just that. You put it in neutral, usually the center position for a stick, and what happens? You step on the gas and what happens? No connection. No connection to the gears whatsoever. That's what you want to be. So anybody who's driven a stick shift car and can do that, that's where you want to put yourself into. You want to put yourself into neutral. It's as simple as that. And then uh, nothing happens. It's kind of a process. And when you put a car into gear, well, there's an obvious force going on. You can hear the gears. Uh, you can feel the engine moving. Quite, quite different than being in neutral. So you want to be in neutral when you use pendulums, when you do everything else. You're letting it happen. You don't need to put it in gear. Uh, that uh, count, contradicts what you're trying to do here. So the whole idea is you just put it in neutral and then you just visualize it spinning in a relaxed, not concentrating, I'm concentrating, oh, grip all your muscles and make it, make it turn. This is failure, failure, plain and simple. So you just relax, you visualize it spinning, and that's it. And that's how all these psychic things, things tend to just pop into your head. And this is very counterintuitive to everyone. Everyone thinks that you have to somehow try to make these things happen. Well, that's not how this energy system works. These bioenergies and these energies you use to um, that go through radionic machines and most of the psychic process do not come from you. You're, you're a director. Uh, and you can kind of think that, and I think everybody understands the movie world. There's the director who directs the actors. But does he act? Does the director act? No, director doesn't act. What does the director do? He directs. Well, we want more emotion. We want less. Um, you're saying this and it's coming off bad. Try it this way. That's right. That's exactly how it works. Uh, but the actors do the work. You have to let the actual device, the psychic wheel, do its own work. You're directing it. The wheel is turning. It's. We all know this can happen very easily. Everybody can do it, but you're not going to concentrate. So hopefully that's very clear. That's how it works. That's how all psychic functioning works, is that you understand this is a done and completed fact. There's no question of what's going to happen here. It's just going to happen, and it may spin fast, it may spin slow, and if you want to, you can put the direction of it, etc. It's going to happen. It happens all the time. There's nothing special about this. People want to make it special because they live in the fantasy world. They live in the fake world that is so much 
the reality of the society because in general all of society is we're living in an urban myth your history is wrong your beliefs are wrong your science is wrong your medicine is wrong so you're just assuming that everything else is wrong when you get into the biophysical and you get into the realm of the um radionics and subtle energy physics this is the real world and you know something the real world works and it works kick ass and everybody who can get into the real world can make it work. The question is, can you leave your fake Disneyland world and get into the real world or not? Because you certainly are conditioned. You've paid your fees, a big giant fee. You've gotten your little ticket to get into Disneyland and now you're going to believe what they believe. After all, you paid for it. They're the officials. And of course, they've led you into the fake world that you're living in. And that's really what reality is. The whole idea is don't buy your ticket, don't go into the park and just make your life happen. The real world is there waiting for you to access it without even trying. Until next time.